The following is intended for mature audiences only. Welcome to the news from La La Land Podcast. Yeah! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the news from La La Land, where today yeah! we have three epically strange siblings <laughs> and one epic guest. And uh, we'll all be sharing our story through... Pop culture, philosophy, and creative nonsense. This is Nick's line. <laughs> what am I doing? That's that was right. a pretty good impression of my of my uh, silly. Yeah, that's my version of your creative nonsense. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I'm I'm honored. I'm your host, Sarah Sokol. I'm here with siblings and people I love as dearly as siblings or dearer. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. That's Nick, the eldest, Steph, the youngest, and Soraya, the age not stated. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think I'm older than all of you. <laughs> we Goodbye. actually don't know how old you are. <laughs> are you older than Nick? I don't know. But... How old are you, Nick? I'm, I'm 30 years old. Yeah, I'm older than you. <gasps> okay. Therefore, yeah. you should respect Ooh, me. I feel like we have someone worthy of respect on the podcast, finally. For <laughs> <So>. once. <laughs> Turn. Um, Soraya, you, you've known us for a long time. It's probably, it's been a while since we've all hung out together, but we certainly have a lot over the course of our friendship. I feel like I know, I knew you first, so I'm the coolest, and then everyone else met you after that. <laughs> How did you two meet, actually? You know, we talked about this the other day, and we can't actually remember, like, the exact point of where we met, but we met, I think, firstly, in music class, but yeah. not in the way I you think. Like we might have bonded over that guy bringing you a rose, and you were like, oh my god, I don't like this guy. What I do you do? I totally <laughs> forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, that was a while ago. Um, but you were a year ahead of me, I think, um, in music theory class. So I was working on something and you were also working on something and we just happened to be in the same room. And I think yeah. that's when we first started talking to each other. I, yeah, I think that's true. And that was, it's been, don't want to date myself here, but like 1200 years. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, right. that it should be noted you. she is an ageless vampire. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so long story short, we've all known Soraya for quite a long time now. I actually remember my first interaction with you was in midair. <laughs> uh, midair? Yeah. So you were over at our house. I forget what house it was and for what reason. And I probably wouldn't have been aware of it at the time. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I ran, I remember running into the room, and I don't know what I was trying to do, but I just jumped into the room and hit the floor and then, like, rolled up and was like, hi, who are you? <laughs> that does seem like a very Steph entrance. <laughs> yep. yep, I can see it. As I saw it a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think I hid under the table. For the rest of the evening. Yeah, any interaction that could also describe a cat. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole weird. interaction, actually. <laughs> yeah. 100%, yeah. Well, I feel like, Nick, you probably met Soraya and interacted a few times through, it. you know, being at, we all went to the same college together. But, um, yeah. like, once she met our family and everything, I feel like you sort of just fit in really well. Like, why do you think that is? Does anyone have any theories on, like, why she could be greeted by a crazy jumping uh, Steph and just let it roll off her back? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I'm not going to answer that question, but I would just add that, like, or, or the, just point out the if, if anybody has been paying attention throughout the course of this podcast, it was a pretty strange family. And uh, so if you find yourself fitting in and feeling right at home, what does that say exactly? 
See, to me, I felt like you guys were the version of normal that I wanted um, because I'm the black sheep of my family. Like, mm. my brothers and my parents, they all went to tech and they're, I don't know, just very different for me. And I decided to uh, go into the arts and I'm very, like, theatrical. Um, so... Mm -hmm. Nobody else in my family shares that interest but me. Um, so when I met you guys, and you guys would just play guitar, play the piano, and dance around the house, and have like creative thoughts, and do creative mm. games, and I'm like, this is awesome. I love this. <laughs> my people. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it felt like very normal to me, and you guys shared a lot of similar interests and yeah mm, awesome yeah. that's good to hear I, don't, I think we can be a little overwhelming no. not for me not at all you are sufficiently perfectly whelmed i always feel like i'm overwhelming to other people because i'm goofy and i crack jokes and again theatrical and i think that yeah. says more about the people being overwhelmed than it does about you <laughs> Ah, too much personality. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I would now that you mentioned that, Soraya. Like, I'm trying to think back of the people that most commonly visited our house growing up. Mostly, not a lot of adults came to visit. Generally, when children came and hung out a lot at the Sokol family house. <laughs> That makes it sound kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it does now. <laughs> well, God, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, I ruin everything good. <laughs> but no, I mean, I guess, yeah, it's just kind of a childlike energy because children are creative and playful. And so I think, like, our dad always got along with children really well. I'm, I'm not sure what you're saying with the children coming over to our house thing. I can't help you. <laughs> I think out of all the parents... <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the kids had, you know, like, your guys' parents are probably the safest to be with because of your dad's job. <laughs> like, Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. yeah, that's true. So, Soraya, we're, we're sort of trying to delve into your background a little bit at this point because we always talk about how we're unique and, you know, have a different perspective, but you do as well. Um, yeah, so I... Always thought your guys' perspective on this podcast was really interesting because you felt sort of like an outsider um, in regards to pop culture because you didn't have as much of that um, exposure as kids. Um, I could easily say the same for me as well, and not because of religious upbringing, but because of um, not living in America. <laughs> so I'm originally from Indonesia. I was born in America, but then um, moved to Indonesia two weeks later um, because my dad's Indonesian and that's where his family is. And um, I grew up as the daughter of a white American woman and a um, black slash Indonesian father. And he's also Middle Eastern, so like, I'm just really mixed and have a lot of exposure to a lot of different cultures. And growing up, I would make occasional visits to the States to visit my grandparents and my mom's side of the family. So the American pop culture that I knew was what I learned through movies. I watched a ton of movies growing up, so my impression of America is like, Michael Jordan, McDonald's, and, <laughs> you know, the military. Yeah, we Americans <laughs> can do it all. <laughs> Those are the only three things you need. So up until what age was this your main uh, exposure to American, American culture? Like, when did you move here uh, permanently? I moved here in the dead of winter when I was 14 years old. So complete culture shock. Wow. Coming from the Yakima, tropics. Yeah. Washington, where it was negative 12 degrees, probably. <laughs> it was snowing. I remember that. Um, and, you know, I was coming from the tropics and also a major city with 13 million people um, to small town Yakima in the winter. Absolute <laughs> culture shock. Um, 
be like, yes. why are we still here? Just to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> we can all and, uh, Yeah, I think, uh, especially when you're a kid, all the pop culture that you're exposed to kind of feels a little bit like a lie. Like, when you get older, I feel like you kind of see beyond what that pop culture was. And I, because the impression I had as an outsider, like somebody living outside of America, that America is perfect and it doesn't really? have any problems. Yeah. Huh. I actually find that really surprising. Keep in mind, I was a kid, so I didn't watch <laughs> CNN or any other news outlets, but like when 9-11 happened, um, our perspective from the Indonesian side was, oh my God, how could this have happened? Like, things like this don't happen in America, and it was a huge deal. Mm. And just our impression of America is as a superpower, right? Um, now that I've lived in America, obviously I've realized that we have our own set of problems, and this country isn't perfect at all. Yeah, yeah. wow. I'm, I mean, this is kind of leading into, perhaps we should transition officially into today's pop culture moment. Pop culture moment! Yeah. Yeah, I was curious how, if there are kids growing up out there today who have that happy-go-lucky view of America, or if now our image is, like, completely tainted at every level, you know? Like, maybe it was also just a time in the past when America had a better reputation for some reason, even though we shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. But, um, I don't know. Maybe it would be different now, you know? I don't know about shouldn't have. I think having, having a, a facade, however fake, to maintain forces you to do some good things at least, right? Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I brought up this article that was sort of like other countries' perspectives now, um, and there are some quotes like, <laughs> here's one, someone from the UK, it's just like random polls and like tweets and stuff. Um, it's a silly place, let's not go there. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then this other one is like, America, am I right, has replaced talking about talking about the weather. Everyone is dumbfounded by what's going on. Um, on the other hand, it is sad that everyone knows more about U.S. politics than they do about local politics. Protests um, for BLM in, are happening in Berlin, but nobody talks about that or talks about anything that's going mm. on anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was interesting as well. Where was that? Then, <laughs> so that perspective was German then? Yes. A Berliner. You just did, Berliner. You, I was going to say, you did an accent for the first one, but not the second one. <laughs> well, I don't know where all of them are from, but, <laughs> but this last one, or how to do the accents, <laughs> the last one made me laugh. It was just, I'm from Afghanistan. This shit don't phase me. <laughs> oh. oh, no. I was like, too real. <laughs> <That was> <laughs> But anyway, that's some more like, and it's just, you just I, I mean, them as I, random. Someone picked them. I, yeah, but I picked like random ones as well from the list, but they, every single one was negative and like this shit in America is so crazy and America is insane right now. And like, mm. what is happening in America? And it's like, I don't know. It's just such a different picture than what you painted from your perspective growing up, Soraya. Yeah, and to be fair, my perspective of America as a child was 90s America, when we were at our economic height, like, jobs were great, our national debt was basically balanced and non-existent. Um, so we were, America was in a period of great economic wealth, so of course the rest of the world saw America as, like, the land of opportunity, the land of Nike and mm. all the other cool brands that I can't think of right now. <laughs> Space Jam! Um, <laughs> Swoosh! Oh no, that's Nike. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Yeah, but... All those shoe companies. 
I mean, so I, I bring up Nike because Nike had a factory in Indonesia and a lot of their manufacturing was in Indonesia. So we had Nike stores in Indonesia, but they only sold um, Nikes that weren't good. So hmm. like they had factory defects or whatever. Um, and so they sold it still at the same price, really expensive for Indonesian um, people to buy. But it's seen as a status symbol. I hate that. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of money growing up, but Nikes were the only kind of shoes we could buy because we were much larger than Indonesians. Like, I had to wear men's shoes because they didn't hmm. make shoes my size. I was like oh, a like foot taller larger. than everybody. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just, they're shorter folks, and I grew much taller than everybody else. Um, made me great at sports. I was, like, growing up, I was like, oh my god, I'm amazing at sports. But no, I was just a foot taller than everybody. <laughs> I'm Ooh. not that great at sports. <laughs> what what sports were you playing over there? We do really weird sports, like, um... Ball and stick. <laughs> Yeah, wow. actually. So Isn't that all of them? <laughs> oh, that, that's true. most sports. <laughs> yeah, but we would do things like take a, a shrimp cracker and tie it up onto a tall pole, and then we'd have to like tie our hands behind our back and try to eat the cracker as fast as we could. Whoa! What? That's yeah. fun. <laughs> or we would have like clothes changing competitions. Or wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what does that mean? At one point, they had us take like <laughs> naked pictures. I don't know what that <laughs> it's not what it sounds like, or maybe it is, and I'm just realizing some childhood trauma I'm buried. <laughs> uh, I didn't participate in that because, you know. Um, but yeah, since we, I went to Catholic school, um, I had to wear a uniform and we wore different uniforms for different days so the competition was like put on your white uniform and then your gingham uniform as fast as you can wow so so this you're you're not kidding like that's an actual sport like that's a would, sport like you would sign up wow. for that and like pay your um you know fee to be in that after school activity <laughs> well it's a after school after school activity specifically to the school like other schools did right. this but you would just compete within the ecosystem of your school and uh, okay. another thing we would do is like tie um a string around our stomach and then at the end of the string we'd have a pencil and then we'd have to like duck the pencil into a glass bottle whoa oh. what See, these all these all sound like like random games that would come up at like a summer camp or something like that that someone would <laughs> right? come up with oh. yeah but the sports where I shined were uh, running. I was a really fast runner. Um, and uh, I feel like you guys do this too, where um, it's like a two-person sport where one person holds the other person's ankles like a wheelbarrow. Oh, like wheelbarrow races. Yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. another summer camp. Uh, or uh, or like uh, team building Ooh, wait, exercise. This, is a really, this will tell me a lot about you. Are you the one holding the ankles, or are you really Jesus. good at being the wheelbarrow? I'm the wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you're the I'll wheelbarrow. Do that one. <laughs> Sometimes you're the wheeler. <laughs> How did we get on this topic? I forget what the question was. Ah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> when you're doing the wheelbarrow race, do you go, like, belly up or belly down? <laughs> oh my god. Do you, like, uh crab walk? Or, or Pretty much, like, like moving your arms as fast as you can. <laughs> what yeah. version? What backwards version of wheelbarrow <laughs> racing were you doing, Nick? That's a little, I just imagine it'd be a lot more awkward that way. You'd be like staring at your wheelbarrow. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> tangent upon tangent. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I wanted to ask you about kind of some differences between the school where you went there and school here, but I guess it's not really comparable with any of our experience mm. because we didn't go to school at all, let alone a Catholic school, which is its whole thing. 
Well, our dad went to a Catholic school, which is kind of funny. <laughs> but he just talked about the nuns, like, smacking him with rulers all the time. Did you did you have any nun smacking going on? <laughs> nun smacking. <laughs> yes, and I think this has to do a lot with why I'm so afraid of authority and following rules. Is And religion and nuns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because they would beat you for... Uh, any reason. Um, like, mm. okay, so here's a cultural thing. When I first came to the States and I joined an American school, I discovered that some kids don't do their homework because they just didn't feel like it. Huh. And that concept blew my fucking mind. How is that? What's the point of that? Did you... <laughs> Did you get hit for that? Or? Yeah, because the education in Indonesia is a privilege. It's not a right. So hmm. coming to America where I mean, it, it is a right. It is. It is a right. It should be. Yeah, I mean, it should be, but it's not in Indonesia. It's not a right. You have to have money if you want to send your kids to school. And hmm. so if you are able to go to school... It's seen as a privilege, and kids understand that, so they try really hard in school. So mm -hmm. when I came to the States and found out that kids don't do their homework or don't even try in school because I'm bored, I don't want to do schoolwork, just blew my mind. I was like, wow. are, you af are you afraid of, of the authorities? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do your homework. Someone's going to call the cops. <laughs> I mean, I don't know when they illegalized teachers hitting students but surely it's not legal now right they would get into huge trouble for it i think it's you mean in indonesia or in the states i mean here oh here yeah yeah no it's not legal to hit students in a school here now <laughs> isn't it a different for private schools though isn't that allowed Ooh, uh i i really don't not think in my so. book <laughs> not not while i'm there <laughs> only well yeah, and I and I, I, I honestly don't know if it's a matter of legality, but I, uh, in, or like what right what rights they have. But I know you can sue somebody for hitting you in the United States, unless they're a police officer who had just cause to do it. But uh, yeah, you can you can sue anyone for hitting you in the U.S. So I I guess I don't know the answer to the question. As a child but... in a Catholic school. Yeah, yeah, you could sue for that, no problem. I'm just imagining. The teacher little, hit you anywhere in the U.S. Yeah. I'm gonna sue! Drag you to court. <laughs> That's really interesting about um, people just not trying as hard in general because they're taking it for granted. Hmm. Right. I feel like there's got to be a way to motivate kids without making it like only some of you get an education like there's got to be a better way right <laughs> actually <laughs> only those of you who try the hardest and are born lucky <laughs> right and i don't like i don't know everything about the american school system especially with how it is today but why didn't you do your research i told you <laughs> <laughs> so sorry <laughs> Who am I? You're right, I shouldn't be here. <laughs> you didn't bring your trifold presentation on the education system in the United States of America from the years if 1990 you look at the PowerPoint, to in 1933. No, but please continue. Sorry, sir. Um, uh, I... I mean, still to this day, I think that receiving an education is a privilege. Even though I went to school in America, I still viewed it as a privilege. Um, not everybody can receive an education, and America's education system does have its flaws, but it's um. And uh, the school I went to in Indonesia was a Catholic school, and my mom sent me to a Catholic school because it is a better education. Um, there were other schools that you could go to that are like funded so by the government, but they're really not that great. It, they're very poorly run, and there's abuse, and a lot this of things. This is actually my question. So, like, the school choice was not religiously motivated? Yes. It's the quality of school, and uh, here's the other thing about my upbringing. My mom's a Christian, my dad's a Muslim, they sent me to Catholic school, and that's why I'm an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice. That that was that was right. a great bio right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you get exposed to so many religions, you realize that most of them pretty much have the same pillars and things mm. that they believe in. But it's like, which fairy god do we choose to believe in? Yeah, and which group, subgroup, do we hate because of that? It's like... <laughs> Right. And it's just all silly. It's all mm. silly. Yeah, that, that makes sense, actually. It took me because it, it took us a long time to get any real exposure to other religions by virtue of being homeschooled and all of our social contacts being within this closed church community. I remember the, the first real religious question that I ever had. It didn't last very long, but it was like the first flicker of doubt that I ever had was actually when I went to four year school. Yeah, uh, the long study. history of flickering. <laughs> <laughs> I went to, and uh, yeah, I, I just, just a history course. Um, and the guy just, the professor made an offhand comment about how Christianity got, you know, many of its early ideas from Plato. And, um, but here was this like historical expert who knew the history of all these documents and everything. And he was just kind of like, oh yeah, your whole religion got these ideas, <laughs> the, like these particular ideas from uh, from Plato and the ancient Greeks. And I was like, what, we didn't come up with all this? We weren't the first person, the Christian church wasn't the, Jesus wasn't the first person to, you know. But wasn't Father, I mean, don't they just say like, well, it's the same God inspired those thoughts as inspired Yes, and Jesus I'm quite thought. sure that is the reasoning that got me right on, back onto the You're the like, oh, thank God, I can still believe in God. <laughs> and this is why most cults, sorry, religions, don't want people to uh, explore other religions or exposure to any other cultures because they'll realize the flaws in their own religion. Do you have like a particular age or time in your life that you were like, okay, this is all nonsense? Or was it just I sort of... I don't think it is all nonsense, but... <laughs> Well, you know what I mean in the yes. context of yes. this question. <laughs> um, well, when we moved back to the States, we still went to church every Sunday um, because my mom was a regular churchgoer and she made us go. So I attended Bible study and all that jazz. Um, but none of it ever appealed to me. Like, I was never like, I need to learn more about this because all of this material is great and I resonate with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. mm. <laughs> it. It's never been a thing for me. Um, I think I had curiosity when I was in my tween years. I was like, oh, what's this thing people are crying over? <laughs> um, right. Well, I mean, I don't know what it's like for your guys' church, but like, the Catholic school that I went to, uh, the masses that we had were like, God, is, or Jesus died for your sins, and why am I doing a Western accent? Yeah, there was a cowboy nun, and she just like, cracked a whip on everybody. She comes in with an actual bullwhip. Like. She's like, God damn, children. <laughs> Wait, but that would be so much better, though. <laughs> Jesus died for your sins, and you should feel terrible about that. And the kids would just, the whole auditorium would weep, except oh. for me. Um, wow. Yeah, so it was, like, super emotional, and I never understood that. Um, Were they weeping like, oh, you're right, I'm gonna go to hell, I'm so scared. Yeah. Man, yeah, because wow. orthodoxy, there was, like, okay, so this is actually an interesting thing. In, in orthodoxy... There is this image, right, of Jesus' mom, who is supposed to be the perfect person, but even that, like, the most perfect person, the our church was like, oh, there's something wrong with that person still because they were born normally, like, and not just, like, brought into being like Jesus, <laughs> you know, and, like, he is the only one who's ever done it that way, and because you are just a human being, there is something wrong with you by default. And that's just sort of like the starting point of, of orthodoxy is like always oh, something wrong with you. You're a sinner, you're broken. I can see how that might resonate with some people because it would feel true. Like a lot of people do have a lot of self-doubt and just feel like there's something not quite right with them and the world and a religion that tells you that like, yeah, it is all fucked up. And it's because <laughs> a girl ate an apple, uh, 
Oh, 10,000 years ago. It's not or your fault, big. but also you are sin incarnate. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's fucking um, Adam and Eve. <laughs> but what I what I would think would be much more appealing, and apparently is due to its popularity, was, you know, like Protestant youth groups, you know, positive, affirmational, uh, self-help Christianity. <laughs> this is interesting because I was just talking with my friend the other day who came up in that type of Christianity. She just asked all of us, and she was like, I've been asking all of my religious friends this. Did you ever have a conversation with your parents where they told you that, like, if a shooter came into your school and pointed a gun at you and was like, you know, tell everybody that you don't believe in God or I'm going to kill you? That was you an know? actual thought experiment that we had. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like... Did you ever yep. have a talk with your parents over whether or not you're supposed to die for your beliefs and whether you're ready for that? And everyone said yes and that their parents told them, no, yes, kidding. they should die for their beliefs. And I remembered back to our parents being like, I feel like they never told us that, but it was expected. It was like the noble no, it thing was, to do. It came up. It was a conversation that yeah. was had, and that was the expectation. Yeah. Yeah, the and right this answer. is something that, like, we never had to think about that much because we weren't dealing with school shootings and stuff. But this is something that public school kids thought about every day. She said she went to school thinking about whether today was the day she was going to have to stick to her guns and die for God, you know? No. Well, I, th I feel like unless anyone has any final thoughts to share on this a very interesting topic that we could talk forever about, we should probably move on to this, the socialism of the day. Socialism of the day. Welcome to the socialism of the day. <laughs> Soraya, I was thinking that we we've talked briefly about the first time Steph met you, but I feel like the first time you came over to our house was a really fun time. It's like one of my favorite memories of all of us together, um, just because we had a dance move competition and everybody got in on it, including you, and it was just a great icebreaker. And I feel like it sort of bonded everybody. I don't know. Does anyone else have any memories of that? Nick, were you there for that? Or was this in I your was. Cool, too cool for school phase? No, I vividly <laughs> remember this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard. There, we, we had a lot of dance competitions growing up. And, uh... <laughs> this was the Soraya one. <laughs> I know, I know. Soraya and I, we were, we were friends, but we weren't like best buddies like you guys were back then. Yeah. So, but... Uh... I, I do vaguely remember us all having a dance party, though, at one point. <laughs> I remember Soraya coming over. Oh. I, I, in fact, remember one of the dance moves was the rabid porcupine, I think. <laughs> I don't even... I've mixed no, so many up. Can you show me? I, I need to see this again. <laughs> no, yeah, this will make for terrible podcasting. Do a, do a, visual, a visual component to the podcast. <laughs> Soraya, you have to improvise the, the rabid porcupine song, yeah, this though. This is a play along this at the home. The trade off to go along with it. Yeah, people people listening at home might not re uh, know what we mean specifically by dance competition, too, because there's a lot of different, you know, dancing with the stars might come to mind. This was like dancing with the stars, <laughs> <laughs> but like dancing a seven year old bugs. kid comes out and says. All right, next do a dance move called the rabid porcupine. You have to make something up. The twisted yeah. sister. It's more my speed. Yeah. I feel like I was the one that was mainly calling the names of Definitely, the dances. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah because I was too lazy to do the dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, want to get that. I've never been as good as it as Steph was. I I do remember in many of these competitions, Steph Definitely being the queen of the improvised silly dance. <laughs> really? Okay. I've never thought of myself as good at any kind of dance. Really? I feel like that's your forte. Dancing? You're, yeah. I feel like you're good with the movement, the body stuff. You've got a lot of, like, energy and... Body. Yeah. You've Thank got a you. lot of I body. Do have, I do have a body. <laughs> I feel like the key to good dancing is having fun 
And most yeah, people are absolutely. just way too self-conscious to dance. No, Because yeah. they feel like everyone's yeah. watching me. <laughs> I think that's why we play games like that. Yeah, just to encourage, like, mm. people to come out more. But one of my favorite gifts right now is, like, this mom just, like, dancing around in a circle and she's, like, wiggling her butt out, you know, like, <laughs> backing it up. And then a little kid, like, runs in to, like, tell her something and he's crying and she just, like, backs it up against his face and just, like, he falls over backwards. Oh, man. It's falling over and never gets old. <laughs> Especially when the mom is just, like, dancing, just unconcerned. <laughs> it's, like, the funniest thing ever. <laughs> anyway, God. I'm sorry, Nick. What were you gonna say? Oh no, I was just gonna say you and Soraya came to a concert uh, with that I played one time, right? And then yeah, it was that was uh, that was with Soraya, right? And then yeah, we were opening for a show, yeah. and then the other band came up. And I will say that like I've been in a lot of situations where dancing has been happening, and I don't and I and I'm not usually able to like cut loose and have a lot of fun doing that, except when I'm with my family and Soraya apparently because because yeah. for some reason in that environment probably we were a little drunk too but <laughs> secret whiskey. I remember we got like the whole room doing like dozy -si does together and we yeah we did full room dozy -si do of like it was like cool high schoolers who would not be into that shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a young crowd at this dance and we yeah we were like trying to improvise line dances with everybody and that was a good time i loved it that was fun. yeah that was fun i think i think the band was called the hot damn scandal <laughs> that's great <laughs> i remember right yeah we were being very drunk and embarrassing at that <laughs> performance but it was really fun probably not nearly as drunk as people thought we were though yeah. i'll betcha yeah yeah i miss those performances and i just i always love watching you guys perform for mm. those who are listening, if you haven't listened to any of their music, like, what is wrong with you? You need to get on that right now, because it is a good time. <laughs> well, we, we still have to release all of it. It's not in a consumable form yet for people, except for Nick. Yes. Music is still in the works. Nick's stuff is consumable. Yes. Yeah. That sounded bad. <laughs> News from La La Land, the Nick's soundtrack, is, consumable. is, yeah, is in the works. But you can still hear some, uh, like uh, some of my old projects. Uh, David's Drinking Band is on Spotify. Oh, it is. Oh, hey! Nice. So you can go, you go. go listen to those what songs. Is, yeah. is this just a plug fest too? Yeah, check we... out Dave's Wait, no, that's band. not a thing. I'm always gonna hype <laughs> my friends up. <laughs> Nick's consumable plug, plug fest. fest. <laughs> 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 We've got you covered. Oh, We've got God. you. We fulfill your needs. Consumable <laughs> plugs. We always leave you satisfied and smiling. <laughs> <laughs> We're good at gauging um, up your well, satisfaction. Well, Soraya... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. This um so this is socialism of the day. This feels very a little bit self-congratulatory <laughs> or something like that. I'm not sure what it is. But um what is your favorite because we talk a lot about like weird little stories, especially of our dad, but like just weird so called stories and things like that that happen in a creative kind of odd household. What is your favorite of those? Um, you can share a cool Soraya moment too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can we can make it go both ways. My favorite Soraya moment is when you and I went to Disneyland alone and it rained so nobody else was on any of the rides and it was awesome. <laughs> That sounds sweet. <laughs> That's a good time. That happened when I first went to Disneyland too. <laughs> my my favorite Soraya moments of the of the past are like ones where you were with Sarah and you guys would do silly little things like say pants and start dancing. <laughs> I forgot about the pants. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Just out of nowhere, you'd be having a serious conversation that suddenly pants, <laughs> little dance. <laughs> yeah, you guys can't see me, but yeah. well, there's a dance we'll that accompanies the, the word the pants. 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 <laughs> it's the kind of dance you would imagine someone doing to like a uh, funk R and B song in their car when they can't move the rest yeah. of their body. Or but. also like yeah. you're jacking off two dicks above your face. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's why we thought it was so funny. I think. <laughs> The two dick face jack. That's a classic move. One of my favorite dance moves. Yeah. <laughs> um, I so my 
favorite Soulful memory actually is when you guys took me camping for the first time. Because um, I have never mm. done an mm. overnight camping trip before. And... Oh, really? Yeah, that was a huge part of our childhood experience. Yeah, and I was like, I want to go with people who know what they're doing. And... <laughs> <laughs> and you guys had like the full setup you had tents and sleeping pads and this is all very exciting to me maybe not to you guys but <laughs> I was like oh my god you have tents and sleeping pads and your mom brought like all the food she had pancakes and eggs for breakfast I was like in the wild this is <laughs> crazy shit I thought we were going to be eating raw trout <laughs> I thought we were only going to eat jerky for three days. Um, and then uh, you had it. You weren't there for that trip, but that did happen. <laughs> um, you guys also had BB guns, and I shot BB guns for the first time. That was a cool thing. Um, I remember your dad uh, teaching me how to chop wood with an axe, and he is the first person to say this phrase to me. Yeah, building a fire makes you warm inside and outside. Aww. Aww. Oh, so oh my god, that needs to be a mug. That's a coffee mug right there. <laughs> and I was like, that's so true because it was a workout. Um, and then I was sleeping underneath the stars and I was just so in awe of all of it. And I can't believe you guys did that all the time growing mm. up. Yeah. Cool. Well, you're making me nostalgic now. I, I haven't know, gone on, you know, camping in a while. Let's go camping! Yeah. <laughs> Let's go camping right now. What are we doing? Stop the podcast. We should be camping and doing LSD right now. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good time. <laughs> All right, let's go. And we're back. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a really sweet memory. I Dad was always really good at not only like finding the little ways to connect with people, like if you came over to him and tried to make a connection with him, he was always right there, you know, like... And always doing some weird little thing. <laughs> yeah, like, here's my personality and my thing, and you could be in on it. <laughs> like, I would love to teach you about it. <laughs> and here's yeah, a fun yeah. little saying about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's old man stuff. They just codify <laughs> so much of what they believe and do into, like, little phrases. Little sayings, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's, like, so simple, but so wise. Yeah, and, like, yeah. The, the youngsters are like, whoa. <laughs> 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 but it's literally just like, I broke up some sticks really small and I made a fire. <laughs> here's, a, here's a challenge for you. I know we're not to pointless conjecture yet, but say... Building a fire makes you warm both on the inside and out, as Yoda would say it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, you want to hear my world famous Yoda? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that. Not his voice. Like, uh, syntactically, how would he have said it? I was just, I don't know, I was sitting here trying to think of it, and I could not, and I thought if any group of people could come up with the answer Yeah, it's this, gonna get really weird after... Yeah, because you'd be like, building a fire makes you warmer. Ouch. No, there's no, no one no, no, saying okay. that in Yoda's on the, grammar. On the inside and out, building a fire warmer makes you... <laughs> yes, that would be yeah. it. <laughs> no, that's not it. Inside and out, warmer does building a fire make you. Well, this has been pointless. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. Speaking of pointless... <laughs> Nice segue. <laughs> pointless conjecture. Here we are at the pointless conjecture. We made it. Whoa. Made it. And, That's um, a bleak, a bleak way of putting it. It was, you know. It's been a long fucking been a journey. Long <laughs> fucking road. Here we are. Soraya, you want to start or like. Whatever. Or whatever. <laughs> I guess I could, like do something um <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so we have a question for you we've come prepared <laughs> but i think new person goes first okay are you excited to participate in the world famous pointless, news from La La conjecture. Land? pointless conjecture well i was racking I my brain all day i was like 
what's my question gonna be? It's like, it's gotta be cool and creative because they're cool and creative. Um, <laughs> so the question I came up with is if you were a sticker, what would you be? Now imagine yourself walking down a sidewalk and you see a telephone pole and that sticker is there. <laughs> okay. What is your sticker? Is it a phrase? Is it a graphic image? I think it's an image for me. I <laughs> wait. You're asking me to brand myself, yes! I feel like. <laughs> Treat yourself to a brand. <laughs> what is so your cool, brand, brand as it would be found on a small sticker? <laughs> it could be like a city code. You could just be like code one, two, three, oh, no. telephone. Oh, it doesn't have to be like about you. It's just sort of your energy as a sticker on a telephone. Yeah. Pole. What's your yeah. vibe? Like a god pointed an energy gun at you and condensed you into sticker form. <laughs> <laughs> Mine would be my, my autobiography condensed down into a sticker size Cheating. you can't read. Oh, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is pretty Nick, though. <laughs> no, yeah, it is. It is very Nick. And you have to use, yeah, like a fucking electron microscope to be able to read it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're taking it very literally, then. Like, you literally got turned into a sticker that people mm -hmm. can study you through. No, I'm literally saying that I would sit down and write my entire biography. Oh my and god. Then, and then print it out on a giant sheet of paper, take a picture of it, scale it down to sticker size. Ugh. I think I am probably just some. I would be something dumb. I'd be like that Calvin peeing sticker. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> You're peeing on, like, the, a fish? <laughs> yeah, just something irreverent, probably. <laughs> The bourgeoisie. But like a, yeah, a just... rainbow or a unicorn or something. No, I wouldn't pee on a rainbow. That sounds no, a weird message. Like peeing a rainbow. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. Calvin peeing a rainbow on the bourgeoisie. <laughs> Not because he hates them, but because he wants to transform them with his pee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it makes it seem much less petty if you add the rainbow in. It's like he's transcending whatever he is peeing on. He's not dissing on it. So yeah, that's my sticker is Calvin peeing a rainbow. That's awesome. I like, I like it. Nice. Sarah, Sarah, where are you as a sticker? Okay. A little, like, cloud-shaped sticker that has a small, like, cartoon brain on it. And the brain is, like, smoking a joint. <laughs> <laughs> and wearing and, uh, shades. Is it also wearing shades? It's also wearing shades, and it has like a sash across its body, its round little brain body that says uh, the Lonely Hearts Club Band on it. <laughs> and it's in black and white. And it's in black and white noir. <laughs> yeah. But also, you're smoking a joint and wearing shades, so it's okay. Yeah, exactly. I would it's stop the cool kind of to look at that sticker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would. I might even snap a, a picture of that snicker, snicker, Snickers. sticker. <laughs> I would snap that snicker in a picture. <laughs> no, well, Soraya, we have a different question for you, but I'm curious your answer to this as well. Do you have a? You sticker? must have thought oh, of one. Yes, I. I would be a jolly dolphin, and splashing out of the water, and I want uh, some text saying, "Hang in there." <laughs> I love yes. that so much. <laughs> oh, I gotta own that sticker. Because every time I pass by one of those posters, I'm like, I fucking I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like that's the energy I want to be and aspire to be, but I'm not quite there yet. Oh, I, I, I know. think you achieved it pretty it well. Kind of, yeah, I thought it was kind of a. a ironic version of the motif in offices or whatever. Yeah. Like the cat posters. <laughs> it's that too. Hang in there and yeah. stuff. It's that too. Yeah. I'm not lying. You got this, adult. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Is it spelled out like lion? L-Y-O-N? Yeah. <laughs> wrong pun. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh my god. We need to do a run of t-shirts that are like puns, but the picture doesn't matter. We're starting a business. <laughs> yes. It's amazing. We've never had such a marketable uh, pointless conjecture before. <laughs> Oh man, I thought of a really, I said a really stupid pun today earlier. Somebody was talking about um, cleaning up uh, how to properly dispose of asbestos. Oh. You know, a really boring conversation. <laughs> I was like, hey, how's that asbestos cleanup going on over there? I'm doing asbestos oh, right here. Oh I saw that coming. Uh, I saw it. No, I saw it. But you're, I think you're allowed to make jokes like that. You're a dad, so you can make dad jokes. That's, that's what the person I said it to told me. <laughs> oh, man. Soraya, I'm sure you're sitting over there like, I see this coming. It's got to be something different. There must be something more clever than that coming. <laughs> that's what I'm supposed to think. Uh, but sometimes... Okay. Getting the answer I expect is also satisfying. <laughs> but um, we have a question for you. Yeah, do you want to present it, Steph, or should I, should I present it? Or should Nick present it? Please, pr proceed. Someone else who has it more concisely phrased. <laughs> okay, so it's a one of my world-famous three-parters. No. Um, so we came up with this together, by the yes, way. This yes, is this from is a collaborative a, question for okay. you. From the Sokols. To the S. I'm excited. S situation. What is your spirit animal first? Should I answer that or wait for all three questions? I think you have to answer this part first. Oh god, I'm afraid. Just to make yes. the rest of it. Yes. But, but it's not going where you think, so just like, it's not about this. Would you fuck your spirit animal? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> we should have done that. <laughs> You sick bastard! <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, are you a dolphin? Yes, your... dolphin always. That's always nice. been a thing for me. So you and this dolphin, this beautiful spirit dolphin, are going to do a heist. You're going to pull off a heist together. So what heist are you going to pull? And also, the dolphin is able to give imbue you with a superpower to help you pull off the heist. <laughs> Okay, well, clearly I need to annihilate capitalism, so how is this dolphin and I going Whoa. to accomplish this? Hang on, what heist do you have in mind that's going to dismantle capitalism? I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I'm, I'm Nick Cage. Oh my god, wait, you're talking about Nick yeah, Cage? our national treasure. That was when we were... <laughs> When we were discussing creating this question together, <laughs> Nicolas Cage and National Treasure oh came up. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. See, I am you guys. It's, we're the same. <laughs> and we were going to tie it into last episode. I think we talked about Nick Cage. Yeah. I could talk about him all day. Con Air, classic. Face Off, so my I favorite. wants to hold a Nicolas Cage film festival, so you guys are outclassed. When yeah, oh, Vampire okay. Kiss. Let's make this more concrete. The Nicolas Cage Film Festival. <laughs> Sorry. Hang in there. Sorry. You're you. With the resources you have, yes. you have a dolphin at your disposal now. Magical dolphin. And, and you are tasked with stealing specifically the Declaration of Independence. Oh, God. Okay, so... How do you go... Oh, wait, 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 wait. You said something about a magical dolphin. Is... <laughs> is we should dolphin. clarify here. <laughs> It's... Is it a spirit dolphin or is the you dolphin guys, real? Let Soraya answer. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, I thought you said the dolphin can give me superpowers to complete this task. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, well, my dolphy is uh, has to be underwater, so that does give us some limitations. So I need to flood Washington <laughs> D.C. I need to get a really big tank. Um, with a, a motor to keep the water moving so that the dolphin can be healthy and safe and happy. Um, but he is willing to do this mission with me. He knows what he signed up for. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I need to dismantle capitalism. Clearly I need to destroy all the world banks. So I, I create my own bank. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> dolphin Bank of America. <laughs> first Dolphin yes. Bank. First Dolphin Bank. It's like Bitcoin, but better. Um, 
Dolph coin. <laughs> yes, and Wait. <laughs> with uh, with every uh, Dolphy dollar you get a blowjob, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> a blowjob from a dolphin? <laughs> <laughs> what do people want? What do people desire? <laughs> <laughs> More oh money. My God. <laughs> Whatever dolphin dollar you no, also no, get it's an the additional first dolphin ever dollar. In, it's the first ever interspecies bank. <laughs> <bug. laughs> I just okay. With every dolphin dollar, you uh okay. Every dolphin dollar is worth a hundred cents. Oh. So a dollar. <laughs> First dolphin bank. <laughs> now that's what I call liquid assets. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know. I'm overthinking this, but uh You will give you a whole dolphy dollar and you get back a hundred American <laughs> cents. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I think it's good marketing. No, this sounds like a part of capitalism. <laughs> you haven't dismantled that either. Dang it. <laughs> or, or is this just the first step? You're getting in the inner circles of all the right people you need to dismantle this. I just, I just need to move the market uh, onto my market, and then um, I... Which is dolphins. Dolphins, <laughs> and then um, I can basically control the financial systems. And once everybody has come over to my dolphy dollar <laughs> bank, um, I would just destroy it. And then just burn oh. it to the ground. Yes, or or flood it because that's Dolphy's way. Um, Poetic justice. Yeah, and uh, just destroy <laughs> it. And I think you've just created a whole religion that is Dolphy's way. <laughs> this is the way. I, I was imagining you kind of going through this adventure to accomplish this, and I know you talked about a really big thing. <laughs> yeah. It was fancy, but I was imagining you like with a sort of a backpack tank on like sort of a steampunk looking thing with a like dolphin a in it and the dolphin's sitting in the tank but its head is sticking up out of the tank kind of over your shoulders like a baby backpack and you're like going around together the dolphin's like <laughs> and, uh, imagine, you're like yes dolphin. that's right dolphin <laughs> imagine He's someone kind of shows up show. in that get up though and they're like hello yes i'd like to start a bank me and my dolphin yeah, would then, like to start a bank then you went to the bank, and I was imagining you, like, sitting at a board meeting in a boardroom at a bank <laughs> with, like, the dolphin backpack on. <laughs> and you're, like, basically, like, the dolphin host, you know, you carry yeah, it around. Yeah, I speak for it. Dol Dolphy's like, okay, okay. and I'm like, <laughs> Dolphy wants to move one trillion in assets liquid. <laughs> Dolphy says that's not nearly fucking good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and it wants it done yesterday? <laughs> Dolphy gonna put his mouth on your dick. I'm not sure if he's gonna bite it. <laughs> and his teeth are serrated. But then, I mean, if you're not careful, then what does Dolphy not like? Does the... <laughs> Dolphy doesn't like whales. Wait. Oh. Wait, dolphins still like whales? Are they dolphins rivals? are whales. I thought they, like, made out. Oh, We're all right. just whales. And um, That's you right. know, for all the dolphin. people out there, they're going to send us emails. We know that a dolphin has not made out with a whale. <laughs> just thought I should. Yeah, that would Do be some we? sort of so. sick perversion, and we don't support that on the news from La La Land. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you may be channeling Dolphy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I like the sound of this Dolphy character. I'm not sure if I like my answer, but I. I don't do well under pressure. <laughs> I thought it was no, great. No, no, that was great. That no, was the, good yeah, fun. the problem is if you add one A to Dolphy's name, then we've got a whole other story on our hands. Dolpha? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Always gotta go to Hitler. What is this? The internet? Every goddamn time stuff. <laughs> I don't know. You said Dolphy, and you were ruling a country authoritarian. <laughs> No, no, just controlling the financial you would markets make a entirely. Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, Hitler a lot more forgivable if it was a dolphin. <laughs> you would be a queen. <laughs> <laughs> more powerful than the foundations of the earth. All shall love you and despair. Oh, this is so nerdy. It's too nerdy <laughs> even for me. <laughs> that was the Lord of the Rings reference. We're ending things with a Lord of the Rings reference, everybody. <laughs> Or read it and weep, or watch it and weep. But either way, it'll make you weep. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, yeah, this has been the news from La La Land, where <laughs> Dolphy is God. And we're, uh, we're working harder, <laughs> hardly working. <laughs> <laughs> where we're all just hanging in there. All hail Dolphy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> If you are enjoying this show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts, or simply email us at voiceofsokol at gmail.com. We would love to hear your feedback. The theme music for this podcast was written and recorded by Nick and Sarah Sokol, and the music you are hearing right now was performed by the band Nuage on their album, Nuf, available on iTunes and Spotify. The news from La La Land is a production of Voice of Sokol, To learn more about the Sokols and their creative content, head to voiceofsokol.com.